it's a John and I've actually got down here below me Padawan Pip who's being very sulky I may get him up towards the end of this video but he's very comfortable at the moment and he's a bit of a sook yes he's not very happy today are you no well today's video I'm looking at my collection of another collection of my role-playing games and this time I'm looking at my Star Wars collection now in my I think a top 10 I guess my favorite role-playing games over 40 years I had one of them was my Star Wars collection and the one that I prefer, prefer amongst my Star Wars role-playing games was the Die 20 uh, Star Wars system. Now that's only because I was never able to get I think the Die 6 from was it West End Games? Yes, I was never able to get that system. Uh, that may have changed my viewpoint but at this stage well, sorry, I was never able to get it in sufficient quantity to be able to form a, um, I guess, a, uh, a significant viewpoint. So at this stage, uh, the Die 20 system is the one that I prefer. Not that I've played very many games of it, and I do not profess to be a, um, a master of the system. So... It is essentially my collection, and I rather like collecting role-playing systems purely because of the information that's in them. And uh, it just gives me something to read, and that's really what I am, is a collector of information and viewpoints. So I was told by a friend of mine who was a Star Wars uh, aficionado that the first edition of this and uh, oh, I'll have a better a better copy I guess of this somewhere a little later is that this was the edition to have because uh, or well to have in my collection because apparently it had more information in there than was otherwise um, in the next edition that I currently have. So that's the first one that I have. Then this is the, I guess, the primary edition that is in my collection. And this is the main one, I guess, that's the staple that I had until the, I guess, the series stopped running. So that was, that's what we primarily used. So that was, uh, that was there. Uh, what else have I got? I have a, a little soft, little soft cover. What's this one? This is Arms and Equipment Guide, and uh, it covers. What's this? Hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for having a good blaster at your side. So the galaxy is a dangerous place, and even more capable heroes need the right equipment to get the job done. Outfitting for a rescue mission on a frigid ice planet differs from gearing up for an assault on a crime lord's jungle world headquarters. But the right connections and enough credits, heroes can acquire all weapons and tools needed to survive any situation. So it's a source book for all sorts of bits and bits and pieces in here. So civilian ground speeders, um, droids. Uh, all sorts of power armor. Alright, yep. So, uh, weapons, rifles, all sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, so that's what, uh, that's what this, that's what that book contained. Then there was, uh, Starships of the, uh, Starships of the Galaxy is the other soft cover that is there. Um, modifying starships uh, had some templates in there. Starfighters, 
Yeah, so that was uh, the other one that I had. Uh, then we had uh, a, and I don't think I had these in any particular order, but there was a Rebellion rebellion Era source book, and uh, which was, uh, see, I like the Clone, Clone Wars era. So that was for me the end of the end of the Republic. Um, was uh, was was my favourite time period. So I really liked that. So uh, I guess the uh, the information I guess that was in the this one here, the Power of the Jedi source book. So that was. Uh, was uh, was always interesting to uh, to me so uh, yeah that was uh, that was another one that's in my collection then there was the ultimate alien anthology which was uh, quite good geez wonder I, I paid forty four dollars ninety five Australian for that still sitting here on the back when did this book get printed when was this done? 2003. Bloody hell, nearly 20 years ago these books were um, nearly 20 years. Isn't that interesting? So, um, see, 20 years ago, and for me, this role playing system is still, still applicable and still fun for me. Um, I'd still play this at the, uh, at the drop of a hat. I don't see this system being any less valid than the um, the current strange dice rolling system. Uh, then we have a, um, a Genosis and the Outer Rims and uh, this one here covers uh, the worlds so that covers it's a world guide where it gives you I guess the bare rim uh, the the bare bones for the uh, so worlds out there, so Mon Calamari and um, and stuff like that. So uh, I confess that uh, I did try running the Fantasy Flight 1 and I really had to go back to these books to find all the information I wanted to, uh, to do what I, I needed. Um, so uh, yes, it was interesting. But yeah, it was, uh, so that was, um, yeah, Genosis and the Outer Rim Worlds. That's, um, that's in my collection. Then I had uh, the Galactic Campaign Guide. Now, it was good in the fact that it gave you um, information that allowed you to choose your uh, settings if I remember correctly so you could choose essentially now I could be talking out my uh, ass again but I think you got to say well where did you want to you know what particular era you were going to choose your um, campaign to be run in, and um, and that. So it was. Uh, I think it was fairly helpful in that stage. So, uh, but no, I'm, I'm just skimming through and trying to remember here. But uh, it's it's quite a um, quite a helpful book from memory. Um, Tips, ideas, yeah. Galactic campaign guide. Or am I thinking of another book? I don't know. <laughs> Go have a look. Find it. It's um. Look, I'm very vague, aren't I? But I'm just mainly showing you. Look, these are bo these books are in my collection. A hero guide. That's um. What have we got? 90 new feats, 30 prestige classes, dozens of factions, new equipment. So it's uh, basically like the uh, new characters. So uh, it's uh, looking... 
looking good sharpshooters yeah no it's a um, lightsaber form feats it's starting to make me want to play Star Wars again to be honest demagogue but yeah hero guide then for those who decided they'd want to go for the uh, the dark side this was um, this was quite a good book actually because I think it covered um, went right back to the very beginning of the uh, the Sith which was um, I found to be very very um, useful so it wasn't just for the you know the I guess the the start of the the Star Wars saga it went right back to the beginning of where the Sith came from and what their whole story was so that was um, I found that quite useful so uh, yeah. yeah it was a uh, their Sith vehicles and um, and stuff I found that to be a particularly useful source book the dark side source book yeah, dark side skills, advice on running and game mastering them. Yeah, highly recommend that one. That's quite good, particularly because I always tend to find that most people decide they're going to go to the dark side one way or the other. Uh, look, this one, uh, I got it. New Jedi Order source book. Um, look, it's. Um, it's interesting, but it introduces the um, who were they? The Yuzon Vung or whatever they were, the uh, alien race that Yuzon Vong or whatever they were. Um, I would never introduce them into a campaign. Uh, I think that was an incredibly silly um, divergence with um, Star Wars almost as silly as the current divergence in Star Wars so uh, but anyway that's just my opinion but uh, as a source book it's it's got its uses some people you know once again as a game master you just take what you want use what you want and ditch the rest so that's in my collection uh, then there's uh, this one's a, a quite useful Coruscant and the um, and the core wheels so it's a um, Another one, uh, information on the uh, on the core wheels gives you a bit of information. Again, not a lot in there, but it's enough for you as a game master to build up and do what you need to create your create your worlds and run with it. So uh, that's all you need. So uh, that is there, and then we have good old ultimate adversaries. So it's. It's wonderful. Um, lots of um, critters, so some more critters thrown in. So uh, you can always do with critters, and uh, some mercenaries. Yeah. So no, it's a uh, interesting, interesting collection. But as I said, Star Wars. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun it's a fun system. It's a fun universe. It's actually yeah, I must admit I was well, I don't think I was that young when it first came out, but young enough. And uh my uh I think my grandfather was still running Hobby and Toyland when it um when it came out here in Australia. And uh I think if I knew just how well it was going to do then, I think I'd have asked him to put some toys away back then. <laughs> it would be worth a fortune now. But of course, you just never think those. Well, once again, back then, uh, we really didn't think that toys, <coughs> you know, toys were just things we played with. We didn't really attach a lot of... Oh, admittedly, I looked after my toys, but, you know... Um, Star Wars was interesting, but I didn't really attach 
that much particular enthusiasm or fanaticism to it. But uh, yes. Anyway, Padawan Pippin, are you going to activate? Look, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Padawan is uh, far too tired, I think, today. Can I... Let's see if I can reduce myself down a level. Let's see. And we keep going down. And there he is. Oh, there we go. Are we going to say goodbye? No? Oh dear, I've startled you awake now, have I? All right. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching this video. And until next time, signing off, the Honourable John.